James Mansell here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, I have had so much happening in my life lately and I figured why not take some downtime and tell you all about it while I style it because you know, I gotta, be, I gotta keep myself busy, okay? So first things first, you may have seen that I actually did the wigs for the Brady Bunch special that um, MTV put on. It was Dragon the Classics, the Brady Bunch. I did the wigs for it. Well. Yeah, I did the wigs for it. I was credited as the wig designer and I am so proud of how everything came out. And it was a journey to get to this, okay? So I decided for today's video, I'm going to recreate a Jan Brady hairstyle that I did for none other than Kylie Sonique Love. Yes. I'm so excited to do this. This hairstyle is so much fun to do. It's so stupid. But we're gonna make it happen, okay? But first things first, I have to announce a few things. If you notice, I have a brand new apron on. Yes. This was made for me by Nate Luna. This is his handle on Instagram. He is amazing. He offered to do an apron for me just because like I asked in a video. He, you know, he asked and you shall receive. The universe will answer you, okay? So this is cute. I said I wanted something in pink leopard print and he delivered. Ernie, zoom out to get the whole thing. Yeah, look at that. It's so cute. It's like a, it's like a 50 skirt. <laughs> okay. It is really, really adorable and I love it. Also, look at this. If I wanted to, the jewelry comes off. <laughs> I put it in my hair. Yes! Oh my gosh, that is so much fun. Thank you so much, Nate. I am in love with it. I'm obsessed. It's everything I wanted. Plus, it has pockets so that like I can put brushes in it and like not you know drop them on the floor and lose them everywhere. So yeah, that is really really handy. Let's put this one in here too. Yeah, let's put that one in there. There we are. See, <laughs> now it's always on my person. I have no excuse to let them fall to the floor anymore and make that clanging noise that I have to edit out and post. Anyways, let's get started and get into some story time about how this Brady Bunch gig came about because, you know, I'm excited to talk about it, okay? So I'm going to reset my wig head and I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, now one thing I forgot to mention about Nate's wonderful design is he actually sent me, like, his costume design for it. And look at that. He really captured every single detail of me. And about time, an artist really captures the true essence of how I actually look. That's how tall I am. That's how long my legs are. The big feet too, that, that's true. And also look, look how small and beautiful and dainty my head is. <laughs> that's how I look, okay? Thank you so much, Nate. No, Aaron, hand up, you put that out to the side so I don't get hair spray on it. You're gonna read the line. Oh, is it, no, 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 okay, let's see, let's see, let's read it, let's read it. It says, Dear James, I hope you love the apron I designed for you. It was such a joy to create. XO, Nate, PS, I also made a second apron using a different pink fabric. Now, I forgot to grab that out of the closet because I was in a rush to get this video done, so you'll see it in another video. <laughs> Just bask in how cute this one is. Yes! Thank you, Nate! Okay, now let's get started. Now, first things first, I'm going to start with teasing out sections of Jan Brady's hair. Yes, that's what we're doing. Okay, okay here we go. That's the one I put it in. All right. <sighs> now, I was actually so excited when I was asked to do this. It kind of came out of nowhere, to be honest with you. A producer who I am on good terms with, you know, texted me, you know, if he'd call me, you know, if I had any free time just to like let them call me. And I was like, oh, sure, World of Wonder, you can call me, I don't mind. And they did, and they mentioned that they were doing this Brady Bunch special. It was top secret, I could not talk about it, as you know, Hollywood things go. Being in the industry, you kind of learn that if you want to be a working girl in the industry, you have to learn how to keep a tight lip. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. If all I do is not talk about it and I get to get paid to make wigs, I'll do that. They mentioned to me very later on in the process that it was for the Brady Bunch. Now, with the luck of God, I managed to get gold wigs here in time for the Brady Bunch girls. Because believe it or not, 613 hair was not what they were asking for for this shoot. <laughs> Which like sent me into a tailspin because that's naturally a hairstyle I like a hair color I always get for myself anyway So I had very few days notice to make this happen, but I knew I could do it Like I had no doubt because Brady Bunch hairstyles They're all so distinctive and a couple of them like Marsha Brady. I got it done in, like five minutes. It was so easy Just add a bit of a tease to a straight wig, but when I had to do Cindy's hair girl Candy Muse's hair nearly killed me <laughs> That was a process I had to consult with NASA to figure out how I was gonna make that work. Ernie had to do a whole new hairline on that. Cause like I had worked with Candy Muse once or twice before in the past. So I had a pretty good memory of how big her head was. <laughs> so we knew we had to do some extra like ventilating on that in order for like, you know, a wig to fit her. Especially for pigtails girl. 
we had to turn her into a little girl with, you know, full on pigtails with swirls. So yeah, that was fun to figure out, but I managed to figure it out and I was very pleased with how it came out. And I'm <laughs> loving how the public has really taken to that picture of her from the promo and have photoshopped her in all kinds of situations. <laughs> they put her in that meme with the girl with the burning down house. I have to say like my favorite one to do is probably Jam Brady because her hairstyle is a little easy like Marsha's, but it's so distinct. And it's so psychotic when you look at it, you know? Like those tendril curls on the side of her head. Like, I don't think she actually really had those in the show. Like she had like long ones. And I was going more off the movie because I feel like that's what everyone thinks of when you think Brady Bunch. They think of Crazy Jam Brady. So I kind of blended the two. Anyways, cut to I am taking my top secret trip over to Hollywood. I'm getting tested. Like they are super strict about the testing there like super, super strict, had to get tested every single day. And I got to meet Eve Plum in the, like, the elevator when I got to the hotel. Like I rode the elevator up with her. I didn't really recognize her because she had the face mask on, but like I could kind of see some things and I'm thinking to myself like, oh my God, that's Dawn. <laughs> Remember that movie she did in like the TV movie in the 80s, The Crack of Dawn, Dawn, Portrait or Teenage Runaway or something like that. Homework covered it if you want to like look at that. They covered it in depth, but I remember Jan Brady E. Plum did that where she was a teenage, I'm gonna censor that out. And it was very dramatic and very, very, very much a risque thing for her to do at that time. Cause you know, she was friggin' Jan Brady. Like what a career move and how ballsy to do that. So young in her career. And like, I mentioned it on the elevator, like, by the way, I'm a huge fan of Dawn. And she's like, oh my God, that was such a scandal when it came out. People were like, oh my God, teenage, you know, she's like, but it had a really good story and it had a really good message and I was happy to do it and tell it. So yeah, that was kind of cool. Like I fangirled a little bit, I could not help myself. <laughs> and lo and behold, I'm called down to do a test again. I have to get tested, like they test you so many tests. And a lot of them, like they did like the, the nose and then they stuck it in your mouth and then put it in your nose again. Like, ugh. it was invasive, but they were not messing around with this. But as I'm sitting there in the hall waiting to get tested, who do I bump into but Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> she walks up and I like don't really recognize her at first. Cause like out of drag, I don't, I've never really seen Bianca Del Rio out of drag. Like I've only ever encountered her at DragCon where she's like, you know, full clown. So seeing her out of drag and she is tiny and you can kind of recognize it just cause like she was so tan cause she just got back from Puerto Vallarta. And I was like, that voice, like, how you doing? Like, okay, that's Bianca. <laughs> it's like fangirling again. Cause like, again, like I love Bianca Del Rio. Like I was obsessed with Bianca before she was even on Drag Race. Like she was on that gay.com series, the drag queens in New York. And they like followed her life as a costume designer in New York. And it was so fabulous. And I like emulated her a lot. I was like, wow, I want to be doing something like that when I start doing drag. She was giving me the, the who's whatever and what for about everything that was happening in the drag world. And I was just sitting there like, yeah, uh-huh. And what else? And like being very like, you know, I'm pretty sure she saw through what I was doing where I was just like, really girl? Oh, by the way, tell me more about that one thing. <laughs> like, I wasn't even subtle about it after a certain point. And like, apparently she was just starving to talk to somebody because she just kept on going. <laughs> Ugh. I was told last minute I had to have options, which I had already pre-planned ahead of time because, you know, I'm a professional. I had to make a golden blonde option, which I was happy to do, but I made everything in 613 first, like platinum, platinum blonde. Because when I think Brady Bunch, I think platinum blondes. So that's what, honestly what I went off of. And I brought the other one that was more close to how their hair was, like that dishwater, golden blonde that they kind of had in the TV show in those early seasons before they got a colorist. Very that. So I brought those as an option. Those ended up being the ones they used, except for Sonique, because Sonique is always a platinum blonde. <laughs> and I respect that like, you know, we had the golden option set for her to wear and last minute she changed it to platinum blonde. <laughs> it's like, you better, you better get your way, girl. I'd be the same way. Like, oh no, no, no. I'm going to be platinum blonde. <laughs> Which it ended up working out because you look at the TV show like Eve Plum, Jam was always a lot blonder than her sisters. Like her hair was way lighter. 
She looked like she didn't belong in the same family, which is probably why, you know, she was such a problem child. Cut to first day on set. I've already met the girls. We've hung out. We've had a good time. I got to see Shea Coulee again, which was always nice. I never get to see her. Oh my God. And I got to hang out with so many people I never really talked to before. Like I never really talked to Sonique or Nina West or anyone like that. Like we never really get to hang out because like we just didn't really work together and we were on the same seasons. So like I only had really met anyone in passing. So it was so cool just to like get inside their brains and talk about their different experiences with the show and everything like that and touring and getting the horror stories of certain towns, all that fun, juicy stuff that I can't repeat here because it's unprofessional. But if we see each other in passing, you know, park it and we'll, we'll spill some tea, but I can't talk about it on the internet because that's just not professional. Now that I'm an industry person, <laughs> even I have my name in credits on Paramount Plus, okay? I'm, I'm industry now. <laughs> Okay, so cut to day of shooting. Well, actually not day of shooting. This was like ugh, a dress rehearsal that turned into them shooting the promo. So like I had to put all the hair on everybody and see it all on like a jumbo screen. Like I didn't really know it was gonna be like a whole green screen thing, which kind of was like tripping me out. It's like, okay. <laughs> Cause like you could see it all projected and like it would start green and then it would go into them inside the bedroom. And like sometimes it would trip you out. It's kind of like watching like those old Resident Evil games where like they're walking on, a, on an image and like if the game glitched, you'd see like them walking up the walls or inside of a bed. <laughs> I met the Brady guys and I met Eve Plum again. Like we talked a little bit more as we were trying on her wig. And Susan Olsen of all people surprised me the most. She was so easy to talk to and she knew so much about like old Hollywood. Like, she was a wealth of knowledge. Cause bear in mind, this girl has been acting since she was three. So like, Susan Olsen has been around the block. She's telling me all about how she met Milton Berle, how she met Lucille Ball. She was friends with Michael Jackson. She was friends with drag queens in New York. Like she had lived a really fascinating life. And she told me all about how Milton Berle had actually written an article about her basically coming out of retirement at six years old. <laughs> like she had, her parents retired her from acting after her sister had stopped. And then she had come back out and like it went thought the story was so funny that he wrote this whole little write-up about her, this five to six year old coming out of retirement to become an actress again. <laughs> like here's Susan Olsen's return. At six years old, she's ready to rejoin Hollywood. <laughs> like... <laughs> but I had a blast talking to her and like when they were doing the table read, I'm blind as a bat. So when I was looking over, I was on the other side of the room inside the wig room and I'm looking at her like, what is wrong with her? face it's like it looked like she had these gigantic like surgical like plastic surgery lips and like this really long witchy nose and like she came in to try her wig on and i told her like you scared the shit out of me when i looked over at you at the table read i was like is that her face now poor dear and she was wearing a mask like a you know a mask that had a screen print of lips and nose on it <laughs> She was telling me, yeah, I got this made to like mess with my kids and it's really been working against me. I was like, I, I'm, I, I agree. I looked over, it's like, oh, that poor girl. What did that doctor do to her? <laughs> it was like in The Sims 2 when you had the plastic surgery machine and like you do it when you have a bad mood and the face gets all warped and you look like handsome Squidward. It was very much that kind of mask from afar. Like I couldn't see it. It was like, oh, oh okay, let me just, let me, redirect, let me redirect my eyes so it looks like I'm not staring at somebody. <sighs> All right, I'm going to take a break to tease the rest of this and I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, I am back. Now, I'm kind of almost done styling. I steamed the rollers off camera because my steamer doesn't reach here. So <laughs> I want to make sure that they actually dried and got the heat they deserved because I want these to be nice and crisp. So right now I'm just brushing it through the hair to get the permatease work down to the bottom of the wig so it doesn't all sit in the sides and dreads up, okay? So, I have to tell you a story. Now, I was working with Julia, who had worked on Drunk History, and her friend Anna Rose, they're another person she got, and Jimmy, who is Brittany Shears, if you're in LA, locally, you may know her as that in the drag scene. They were fabulous and fun. They were helping me with the wigs, like applying and gluing them to people. But this freaking clip right here, I wanna tell a story about, okay? so. It's like shoot day number three. And Kylie had already filmed the scene where she wore this clip in her hair. And we swapped it out for a red ribbon later on, but she had finished an opening scene. They had to do a reshoot. 
and the clip, I remember taking it out in the studio to replace it with the red ribbon. And I could not for the life of me remember where the clip was. Like I knew in my mind, like I knew I had it this morning and I put it down on the table. Where did it end up? Lo and behold, they have to do a reshoot and they need the clip back in the hair. So I'm like scrambling last minute trying to figure out where did this stupid clip go? I ended up going all the way back to that hotel, which wasn't actually that far, but like I was in panic mode. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I do not want to be known as the person that, you know, missed the continuity on a shot. So like this clip is nowhere to be found. Like they tore up the wig room trying to find it. Lo and behold, I go right back out to the studio where the green screen machine stuff being shot. It's right there on the friggin' table outside the studio. I, like I grabbed it and threw it back on the table in the wig room and like, <laughs> Julia's on the phone and she looks at me and she's like, are you serious? Like, yes, it was in the stupid studio this whole time. Like we tore up the whole place trying to look for this stupid thing and it was there the whole time. And to be honest with you, looking back at it, they used the clip with the red ribbons. So they never even saw this stupid thing in the hair. <laughs> But that's Hollywood, like I went into full blown panic mode, like, oh my God, send someone to CVS, we need a clip right now. <sighs> For no reason. <laughs> Some of the work I presented, I was very, very pleased with myself with, I didn't really think I could do it. And I ended up making it happen. Like the Cindy wig at first was a real challenge. And like, I had to do a couple of them to really figure it out. But as soon as I figured out like the mechanics of how to do pigtails on a wig for a full grown person, <laughs> Like, I'll, I know how to do it for sure now. It was a lot of French braiding and a lot of like trial and error and a little bit of tears here in my Las Vegas apartment, but I managed to make it work. <gasps> yes, this, I'll leave you with this. Okay, so the very finale, we have to film Nina West wearing a full wig, that big Buffon Alice wig, which I had to somehow figure out how to smush down and make it still proportionate with Nina's head. I had to smush that down so that it could fit that little teeny tiny hard front Jan Brady wig on, like the black wig she's wearing. I had styled a Jan Brady wig for her. And like, I had talked a little bit with the production, like, do we know how we're gonna do this? Cause like, are we just gonna cut and have her have it off? Cause like, she takes it off on camera in the actual show. Like she rips it off her head and holds it. So like, they're like, yeah, like we want a wig that can do that. I'm like, but I'm here now. So like, in the final hour, I managed to like grab another wig that I had used for a previous scene, the Midnight Temptress. I had curled it, cut it, and basically I heat set the whole thing in under an hour so I could cut it in half and combine it and make like a Franken wig with that Jan Brady wig so that it would be big enough to fit comfortably over Nina's head so that she could take it off for that bit. Girl, that is drag magic right there. I was so proud of myself that I managed to do that. Work underneath, like, it, was like I'm not, it wasn't an immense amount of pressure, but like, it was pressure I was putting on myself because I didn't want to leave that studio thinking I gave up. Like, I don't like the words, I can't. So like, I was very happy with the fact that I made it happen in like the very, very final hour. I managed to like make it and it worked for the bit and she was able to like take it on and off. That was one of the things I was probably most proud of this whole shoot is like, I worked really well under pressure and like, any problems that came my way, I managed to like have a way out of it. Just cause like, you know, I've styled wigs on this channel for years now. So any hurdle that comes my way wig related, I feel like I can kind of handle them. Like this was an ultimate test to see if I could do it. And like, I feel like I really did a good job. And it's not really in my character. As you guys know, like I have a hard time taking compliments. Like I put the character on and I try and act larger than life. But like when it comes to taking compliments, I'm really bad at it. And I give myself a compliment, a pat on the back for this one because I feel like I really did a good job. And I was very happy with the stuff I presented. There's so many experiences I could not trade in for the world. Like I got to actually work with Bianca Del Rio hand in hand with a wig. Like she, I was told prior to shoot, she was gonna be bearing her own. And like, I talked with her prior to that to see what color she'd had just so I could make sure like they would match the other girls. And like that happened to like work out like great minds think alike. We got in the same shade of golden blonde but she didn't end up using them. She saw the wig I brought for Carol Brady and she just took it. She put it on a wig head. She started just dismantling it apart and I just like, got to sit there and like stand there and help her with it. Like holding up hair. She was showing me how she likes to tease her hair for herself. And like she was giving me such a great like hands-on lesson in how to style hair because I don't know if folks, if folks know, like Bianca Del Rio used to work for the opera. She knew how to make wigs that were made to last for literal years. Like those opera wigs, they have to be reused and sit on shelves for years, decades. 
So like she knows her stuff when it comes to like styling a synthetic wig and she's telling me all these little things that she likes to do and that like she had worked under a great wig maker who taught her everything she knew and she eventually graduated doing costumes. But like I couldn't trade that experience in for the world. Like it was so cool being able to hear like these just, like stories of like how they used to do it, you know, before like the internet and all that stuff. Like this is the stuff that you this, you do this. You use this kind of stuff to use this kind of cream to set wigs you use this kind of curler, you have to make sure you separate them this way. Like all these really meticulous details that like you don't learn unless you actually study under that person. So like I was so grateful and having such a blast just sitting there helping her style this. And like I knew for a fact I wasn't gonna like be doing Bianca's way because Bianca does her own hair. But I was happy knowing like I basically gave the base, like I teased out the base and she just went to town hacking at it and creating this like crazed Carol Brady <laughs> hairstyle that she was happy with. Like she wanted something that was still said Bianca. And I was just grateful just to be in her presence and like learning how to style hair from her. Cause like, again, she worked for the friggin' opera. Like you cannot buy that experience. Okay, now for the tendrils, it's very, very simple. All I'm going to do here is pull it a little bit, not to disturb the curl too much. Cut at an angle. And like that, it's supposed to fall up like that. <laughs> it looks psychotic. <laughs> But it was so much fun watching Sonique wear this hairstyle. And she's like doing the jamboree walk where the hair flips back and forth, and little tendrils bouncing off her forehead. Ugh, I love it. Yeah, I did just about every wig in there. Um, the male wigs were brought by Julia, who did Drunk History, and I did some work to like freshen them up to make them like, you know, ready to wear for the guys. Like I added permatees and stuff to them and combed through them and styled them. So it was a team effort on that front. But like all the girl wigs I did, and the only ones I didn't do were RuPaul's. RuPaul had someone that does her all her hair. She didn't go through me. And I didn't do Michelle's wig either. She also has a wig person she likes to use. I wasn't even there when they filmed that either. So like, Laura knows what happened on that. I only provide the wigs for the wig shop <laughs> for that scene. <laughs> the Midnight Temptress, that's my wig. And if you look closely, Ernie clocked it as you're watching it, you can see my white James Mansfield beauty tag <laughs> inside the cap. I gagged. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're just about ready. This is the hair. I am going to cut the lace and try her on. I'll be right back with the final <laughs> results. Welcome back. This is the final results. Oh my God, I look psychotic, but I love it. <laughs> in case you're wondering, I do sell this wig. It is actually comes in a curl pattern with permatees. This is the Femme Fatale Pale Blonde. Yes. She is sick, man. She was perfect for Jam Brady because Jam Brady has like that white blonde hair. Ugh, oh, love it. Now, this is so much fun to style. This is so much fun to like give you guys a little bit of my like behind the scenes tea, I suppose, when it comes to like working on this production. It was like my first time ever doing anything like this and it was so exciting to do. Oh my gosh, like I'm so, I have to apologize in advance that like I have been a bit neglectful with like stuff because I was working on this. Like I had to get it done. So like everything was moving so much slower in my real life because I wanted to like do a good job for this because you want to make a good first impression, honestly. And I feel like I did. <laughs> I'm happy with what I presented and I hope you guys enjoy my little walk down memory lane that was literally like three weeks ago. <laughs> Ugh. Anyways, I have to read out some bad moments because I haven't done that in a long, long time in a few videos. So I have a lot to read out. I have a lot of people to thank and y'all have been really, really generous. So. Here goes. I would like to take a moment, a Ven moment, where I think everyone has hit me on. Venmo, I would like to thank Sergio. Thanks, Sergio. <laughs> Jaime Mercado. Oh my God, Jaime, Jesus. That's a lot. Okay, here it says, a little something to help buy a new wig stand. Thank you for the continued entertaining content while styling your new digs. I did buy a new wig stand. Thank you, Jaime. <laughs> She said, this poor girl, let's get her some money. She needs a wig stand. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Jacob, thank you so much. Okay, um, Sean. Thank you so much, Sean. Sergio again. Jeez, Sergio, thanks. Ugh. Ben, Adrian, James, and Kenny. What did you guys, oh my gosh, you guys are always doing the most. Are you like, do you like, are you like frackers or something? Like, where are you getting all this money from? Anyways. We love the new Vegas setup and the video. Keep up the awesome work, James and Kenny. Yes, thank you. They love the new Vegas setup, although I forgot to turn on the track lights, which, you know, 
Some people think track lighting is tacky, but I think it actually adds to the atmosphere. I'm a still Magnolia's girl at heart, okay? I would like to thank for the PayPal money, Kate. Thank you so much, Kate. Now, this was so much fun to do. I really, really enjoyed Jam Brady's hairstyle because it is psychotic. Like, especially in the Brady Bunch movies, like, this is definitely, like, a distinctive look. Like, what is the inspiration here? Like, I was doing research on it. Apparently, the actress that played Jam Brady said she would have migraines from doing Jam Brady because the curlers in her head were so tight. I can only imagine. Now, I feel like I've officially moved to Las Vegas. As you may have noticed, the business, James Mansfield Beauty, is back open. You can now buy gorgeous, glamorous wigs from me. As well as my P.O. box is back up and running. So for those of you who want to submit wigs to be transformed, I'm going to have it linked down below. I have my new P.O. box. If you want to start doing subscriber submitted wigs, I'm happy to take them in and see what I can do with them. You know, the wig doctor is in the house. Okay. Now, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. And um, thank you, World of Wonder, for giving me this opportunity. I really, really appreciate it. And if you don't know what it means to be, oh my God, thank you so much. Consider me for more work and in the, like, the future and stuff. Thank you. Now hit the outro. Click here and watch me style a wig with Nebraska. Or it's me transform a $7 Party Vegas wig. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll put you on a Thunder shirt. So click it.